Alright people, today we're diving into the sometimes murky waters of the Fluval Flex. Now don't get me wrong people, this tank has some serious aesthetic appeal. That curved glass, oh gorgeous. But like any relationship, sometimes the honeymoon phase wears off and you start noticing some flaws or problems. So yeah, let's crack open the lid and see if the Fluval Flex still deserves a thumbs up. Now first, let me just say, this is not an attack towards Fluval. I am a big fan of Fluval products. All of my aquariums are Fluval and pretty much all of my equipment like the filters and the heaters and the lights, they are all Fluval products. I am a huge fan. But the Fluval Flex does have some problems or flaws, which to be fair, they're not even really flaws. They're just some things that you want to think about before purchasing a Fluval Flex. But yeah, before we do that, let's talk about the positive things about the Fluval Flex, because the Fluval Flex is definitely a very nice aquarium. I mean, for starters, the look itself is just amazing. That curved glass looks so cool and it looks really, really unique. And on top of that, like pretty much most of the Fluval aquariums, it has its own stand and the stand also has this curved design which makes it look really really cool. Now for full transparency we didn't actually get the stand we just have it on top of an Ikea cupboard because we just wanted a bit more storage but if you need to fit the Fluval Flex into a tight little gap that stand will actually make it possible. Now the Fluval Flex also has a really strong light which is great for growing plants. You can create a really cool small planted tank and you shouldn't have any problems with growing the plants because the tank is so small it doesn't actually take much for the light to reach the bottom and yeah you should be fine with most plants. Now another really cool thing of course is the fact that you can keep some nano fish. You know if you have a bigger aquarium and you try to put some nano fish in there there's a good chance they're going to end up as snacks to the other tank mates. So the Fluval Flex is a perfect solution if you want certain small fish. Also it's ideal for Siamese fighting fish or if you want to keep some cherry shrimps and yeah and overall it's just a really cool nano tank. Now another great thing about the Fluval Flex as I mentioned before the size itself and the stand it doesn't actually take up too much space so if you're someone who doesn't have that much space and you really want a fish tank the Fluval Flex might be the answer for you. Another really cool thing is the remote you can change the colors of the light and they have loads and loads of options but I do have to say if you have the Fluval Flex plugged into a timer the light for some reason doesn't really work as in the remote. That's the case for me anyway. Like, as soon as we put the Fluval Flex on the timer, we literally can't change the light settings or anything like that. However, luckily we don't actually change the light anyway. We just need it at the normal white light and that's the one that stays on all the time. But yeah, I should mention that if you're looking to use a timer on the Fluval Flex, the remote doesn't seem to work for some reason. Now, the last positive thing that I want to talk about is the fact that the Fluval Flex has a back compartment that holds the filter and you can also put the heater in there as well. That allows you to completely completely escape the space you have available without having to have things like a heater or a filter kind of ruining the natural effect. So yeah that back compartment makes the Fluval Flex stand out from other nano fish tanks. But I should also mention that the uh, 57 litres or the smaller version whichever one you get that maximum capacity includes the back part meaning the actual part where you will have fish is not actually 57 litres. So yeah just keep that in mind as well the tank is actually a little bit smaller than what it's advertised that's because the back compartment also uses up that water. All right, people, so that was all the positive things that I've had to say about the Fluval Flex. But like I mentioned at the start, the tank does have some flaws. So here, let's talk about that now. And the first flaw is actually one of the things that makes this tank stand out, which is the curved glass. I mean, people, once again, it looks so nice. It's like an aquatic art installation. But here's the thing, people. Algae does not appreciate aesthetics. Algae really doesn't care. And yeah, you see how I mentioned that the light is really strong and it makes it really easy to grow plants. Yeah, unfortunately, it also makes the algae grow on the glass, which is something that you're going to have to deal with with pretty much all the fish tanks. Scraping off the algae is part of the maintenance. However, the curved glass kind of makes it a bit of a problem. You see the scraper that I use, it's this one. And yeah, people, when you have like a curved glass and you're trying to scrape it, it doesn't get that smooth shape. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, 
back the sides of the tanks are completely fine and it does still work on the curved glass but like I said it just doesn't seem like it's as effective as it is on the straight glass. Now of course there is a way you can tackle that you can use a sponge or you can use the magnetic algae cleaner however this scraper is definitely the most effective when it comes to scraping off algae and it really is a shame that it seems like you can't really use this on the curved glass. I mean once again you can but you're definitely going to notice that there's going to be some bits left over especially in the middle when I say middle I mean that the middle where the blade would be by the way if you want to get this algae scraper I've got a link in my description that will take you straight to Amazon and I highly recommend it man they make it so easy to scrape off the algae off the glass but yeah like I said the curved glass does make the algae cleaning a little bit more difficult once again you can tackle that with the sponge algae cleaner but I've tested it before and it's definitely a lot that like, it requires a lot more effort to use those things over the algae scraper now the next floor has something to do with the back compartment you see it has three different compartments the first one is where all the water comes in from the main part of the tank then it goes through the middle compartment which has the sponge and that has all the filter media and then it comes out into the last compartment which has the motor and the pump that takes the water and pumps it back into the main tank and yet although that back compartment works really well and it's a real space saver when it comes to the whole tank in general with the scaping and all of that there is one annoying problem that can happen you see that middle sponge sometimes when it gets a little bit too dirty what happens is the water levels on the last compartment starts to drop and I don't really know how to explain it I'll try to take some footage but the way the motor is it's right at the bottom it's about the size of a fist and it's got a tube that leads up and into the output that comes back into the fish tank now as long as the water level is above the motor everything is fine however if the water level goes below the motor then the motor can start to overheat and yeah like I said sometimes if the sponge gets a little too dirty and the water can't really come through into the next compartment sometimes the water levels do go below the motor and yeah it can be a little bit annoying because that sponge you don't necessarily want to clean it too often because it holds a lot of the beneficial bacteria that like I clean it around every three months but the thing is if you forget or if you have a busy period or if it just gets dirtier than you expected and the water levels drop yeah you're gonna have to make sure that you notice that because it can basically destroy the motor of the pump so yeah it's not necessarily a design flaw as long as you stay on top of your maintenance you shouldn't have that problem to me personally it's only happened twice so far and luckily we noticed it straight away because the motor would start making a weird noise which kind of brought our attention to it and then you know we would clean the sponge and then it will all be fine again before we carry on if this video is helpful to you then let me know by leaving a like or a comment and if you want to see more videos like this every single week then please remember to subscribe it really helps me out now the next floor also has something to do with the back compartment and that's with escaping fish like I mentioned before the first compartment is the compartment that takes in all the water water from the main tank and the way they do that is by having two openings one at the bottom and one at the top now people those openings are a little big I can't lie if you have things like coolie loaches they can easily get through that also if you have some nano fish like mosquito rasporas they will also easily get through that now to be fair to fluval they do include some grills that you can put over the top that does reduce the size of the gaps however those gaps are still big enough for something like a mosquito rasporas and the coolie loaches to be fair they both go in and out of them and it's really really annoying like the coolie loaches are fine because they can find their way out again but the mosquito rust borers do really struggle and it's gotten to a point where i just don't have the water level up to the top grill so we don't lose any mosquito rust borers now once again it does have a few fixes as well of course you can put some nets on the other side just to stop some fish going through there i might actually do that but yeah it's definitely something that you need to consider especially if you have certain plants with your fish tank like if you're looking at the fluval flex to maybe grow a colony of cherry shrimps it works great but just understand you are going to lose quite a few shrimps to those intake gaps right with this next one i'm not really sure whether to see it as a floor it's about pest snails and once again the back compartment you see one of the really annoying things is if you are unlucky and you get pest snails in your fluval flex it is almost impossible to get rid of them because of the back compartment you see one of the main ways you would get rid of pest snails is by introducing introducing something like a loach or an assassin snail that can hunt after all of the pest snails and get rid of them however because of the back compartment you're always always going to have some pest snails back there so unless you literally clear out everything in the fluval flex and 
basically start again there's like no way of getting rid of the pet snails you know i've tried putting a pee puffer in before and it worked great it got so many pet snails and it did look like it cleared out all of them however the moment i took them out they came straight back because all of the ones that were hiding in the back just came through into the main tank and yeah just know pest snails are almost impossible to get rid of in the fluval flicks because of that back compartment now the last thing i want to talk about is not really a flaw or a problem it's just how the hobby really goes and that's the question of are you going to upgrade in the future you see for many people who first get started with the fish keeping hobby they start off with a small tank something like a fluval flex as a matter of fact the fluval flex was my very first fish tank well not very first because when i was a kid we had a fish tank but, but it was my first own one that I had in my room and most of the time what happens is you end up falling in love with the hobby you start buying fish and you run out of space and then you end up buying a bigger fish tank anyway so honestly if you are looking to get a first fish tank I wouldn't recommend getting something like a Fluval Flex I would actually recommend getting something like a Fluval Roma you don't need to get the biggest one like a 240 you can get like I think it's 120 litres it's a decent size and it gives you a bit more space to play around with escape your tank and get some extra fish and I would save the Fluval Flex for if you want to keep some specific nano fish or if you want to keep something like a Siamese fighting fish who prefers smaller tanks and yeah things like that now, of course if you don't have much space then once again the Fluval Flex is going to be a great choice and even with all the flaws that I've mentioned they're not actually any design flaws or anything like that it's just more it does add a bit of extra work to your maintenance but yeah in conclusion the Fluval Flex is it beautiful? definitely is it problem free not quite people unless you're willing to put in that extra work for the maintenance but to be fair that is fairly normal with smaller fish tanks anyway because smaller fish tanks are actually more maintenance than bigger fish tanks that is definitely something i wish i knew before i started keeping fish talking about that i actually made a list about seven things that i wish i knew before i started keeping fish and if you want to see that video then click right here